Hey everybody, welcome back to another console restoration. Today I'm working on a Sega Genesis Model 2. I picked this unit up a few weeks ago as part of a larger purchase of faulty consoles, and this unit came without any cables or accessories. I already own a Model 2 that I restored long before I started this YouTube channel, so I'm gonna borrow the accessories from that to test this guy out. Here's my Model 2, works perfectly, good power adapter. And trying to power this faulty unit up and it doesn't turn on. When your console is not turning on, normally I would say the first thing you should do is check your power supply voltage with a multimeter but I already know my power supply is good, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this unit up and see if I can figure out what's going on. I don't have to look very far, there's been a prior repair attempt on this console, and look at this beautiful soldering job right here folks. Not only does it look like we have some cold solder joints, but there's glue holding these wires down, and when you have to resort to glue to keep your soldering from breaking off, it usually means your soldering's not very good. And using a multimeter, I can see that this connector is not delivering any power to the board. And if you look closely, you can actually see the center pin wobbling. Just by jigging the connector a little bit, I was able to see the power LED light up, which is a really good sign. All right, guys, let's get rid of this monstrosity and repair this connector the way it should have been repaired in the first place. I'm not seeing any broken traces or rip pads, so these jumper wires are completely unnecessary, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the connector so that I can take a closer look. These pads cleaned up very well and there's no damage that we need to repair here. I'm seeing some pretty bad oxidation on the center pin of that power connector. Solder is not going to stick to that, so that oxidation needs to be completely removed. I did try a little bit of rubbing alcohol and that oxidation didn't come off, so I'm gently filing it down. When you get oxidation like this, it means you're using excessive heat or low quality solder or both.
when you use good quality flux and solder, you're gonna get nice shiny solder balls like this. And this is what a quality repair should look like. And that takes care of the power connector. Let's hook this unit up and test everything out. And right off the bat, in the game menu here, I can already tell that some buttons on the controller aren't working. The up button's definitely not working, and I wasn't able to make any selections in the game menu, so A, B, or C might not be working as well. I already know this controller is good, so my attention goes straight to the controller ports on the motherboard. And we have a bunch of broken pins here. The pins shouldn't be moving when I push them like that, and that shadow at the bottom of all these pins is a giveaway that all these joints are cracked. Now, you could just reflow these, but when I see broken pins like this, I like to take a closer look at the traces underneath to make sure that I don't have any rip pads. That way, if anything's broken, I can bridge it or repair it while I'm already here. And using fresh solder is never a bad idea. And careful not to hit any nearby plastic parts with your iron, like I just did right there by mistake. All the products I use are linked in the video description. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, but if you're just looking for some quality flux, solder, or braid, you can't go wrong with MG Chemicals. Those guys make extremely high quality stuff for the price, and their products are just a delight to use. And I do wear a mask when I'm soldering. Most of the time, if you're not working in a ventilated area, at the very minimum, slap on a mask. You don't want to be inhaling these nasty fumes. All right, let's quickly give this guy another test before we clean it up and put it back together. Thank <laughs> you. 
we are good to go. My favorite way to clean a nasty shell, hot water and dish soap for about half an hour. It does all the hard work in getting the grime off for you. Those little red dots turned out to be some sort of paint or epoxy. They didn't come off, so I'm not going to worry about them too much. This is my favorite part, reminding myself what this thing looked like before I started and what it looks like now. Another console may be destined for e-waste or the trash with many years of life left in it for someone to enjoy. And it's always best to test the two player game so that you can make sure that all the buttons are working for both player one and player two. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed working on it and I'll see you guys in the next one.